Hello and welcome to another week of Newman Congregational Church's Holy Troublemaker TV. I am Christy Winveen, the Minister for Faith Formation and also your host for today. Come on and let's learn about another Holy Troublemaker. We are made of stories and stardust. We tell the stories of Holy Troublemakers and unconventional saints, people of faith who have worked for love, justice, compassion, to inspire us, make us bold, and connect us to each other in the love that makes us one. I'm very excited to read another biography of a Holy Troublemaker with you from our Holy Troublemakers and Unconventional Saints book by Deneen Akers. This week, our Holy Troublemaker is Miriam Mulcar Mulcara. I'll say that again. This week, our Holy Troublemaker is Miriam Mulcara. Let's read and find out about her. One day in Iran, a woman named Miriam had to dig deep inside of herself and find an enormous amount of courage. She needed to try to change a law in her country. But in order to try to change it, she knew she might be hurt or put in prison. But she had already been in prison and treated badly for being honest about herself, and she knew something had to change. She also knew she was the best person to try to bring about change. You see, Miriam was transgender. When she was born, her parents and doctor thought that she looked like a boy, and so that is how they thought of her. Inside, however, she always knew that she was a girl. When I was very small, I used to scream when they tried to dress me in a boy's clothes, Miriam said. Every night I prayed for a miracle, but in the morning I looked at my body and it hadn't happened. When she was older, she got a job as a nurse in a hospital where she was known for her gentle hands. A doctor who worked there was also transgender, but he was a transgender man who had already fully transitioned into living a man. One day, Miriam confided to him that she felt like she was really a woman. He told her that he understood, and he told her, to, he, and he told her his story. He explained to her what it meant to be transgender. She had never realized that other people also had similar experiences of being born in a body that looked on the outside like one gender, but on the inside they knew that they were another. She felt so much better knowing that she was not alone, and she began to start dressing as a woman much of the time. She also took hormones that helped her body look more like a woman's. When Miriam finally told her parents about her true self, they were very upset. She decided to go to a religious authority, as both she and her parents were very devout Muslims. Miriam's struggles grew harder in 1979, when Iran had a revolution and the government of the country was taken over by strict religious leaders. Rules about how people had to look, dress, and behave got stricter. There were especially strict rules about gender roles. Miriam was punished on several occasions for dressing like a woman and even got thrown into prison. She was lucky to have connections with powerful people who got her out. She was forced to take a hormone to make her look more like a man. She had to grow a beard, something expected of men under the new religious leaders. Miriam was miserable. She knew she was a woman, yet was forced to look and live like a man. She decided she needed to visit the most powerful religious leader in the country, Ayatollah Khomeini, to ask for permission to live as the woman she knew inside that she was meant to be. She knew this was a big risk, and yet she knew she had to try. She went to the compound where the Ayatollah's office was. She placed a pair of shoes around her neck, a well-known symbol in her country of someone seeking shelter and refuge. She also carried a Quran to help convey the message that she came in peace. Unfortunately, the Ayatollah's guards did not honor her symbols of peace and shelter and began to beat her. To them, she looked like a man dressed in a suit with a beard. They thought she had come to harm the Ayatollah. I am a woman, I am a woman, Miriam cried out. The Ayatollah's son, hearing her cries, came out so, outside to investigate. He intervened and told the guards to stop. He brought Miriam to his father. Miriam began to tell her story, and her story touched the hearts of everyone in the room. Miriam's courage paid off. She walked out of the Ayatollah's office with a letter giving her legal and religious permission to seek the medical treatment she needed to safely and fully live as a woman. The letter he gave her not only gave Miriam freedom to live her life as her authentic self, 
but it gave other transgender Iranians the same religious and legal permission. She later started an organization to spread awareness and help to other transgender people know about their rights. She was remembered today as a trailblazer. Miriam's bold and risky walk into the Ayatollah's office had forever not only changed her life, but the lives of other transgender people in Iran too. Have you ever had to do something that felt scary in order to be your true self? That is the question from our book today. One of the lessons that we can learn from Miriam's story is being true to yourself also frees others. Through the past few years, I've been able to meet some of you, and I'm always so impressed by those of you who are living authentically and as, as yourself. Sometimes it's an act of how you dress yourself, or perhaps when you dye your hair green. Perhaps it's, perhaps it's the way you honestly answer questions when adults around you ask them, or maybe it's the way you ask adults questions just out of your curiosity. Being true to yourself encourages others to be true to themselves, and that is beautiful. I wonder who has influenced you? Are there certain people in your faith tradition that have taken big risks for the sake and safety and freedom of others? What have you learned from them? How have they helped you be true to yourself? Some of you who are watching me feel a little scared about being true to yourself. Maybe you hold a secret really close to yourself that you don't want to tell anybody because you are too afraid. I hope that Miriam's bravery might help you feel brave. You don't have to share all the parts of yourself all the time with all people. And in fact, you get to choose when you share those parts of yourself. That's only for you to decide. But I do hope you know that when it comes to our church, no matter where you are or who you are or where you are on your journey in life, you are welcome here. You might not, we might not have all the answers you need. You might not have all the answers you need, but just know that we will embrace you with love and we will help you in any way that we can to find you resources or care, whatever it may be that you're searching for. Let's pray. Holy One, there are things about ourselves that we hold close to our vest. We don't want others to know or we are too afraid of what will happen when we live into the fearfully and wonderfully made creature you love dearly. Will you help us to take small steps each day to live more fully and more bravely so that others will feel the freedom to do the same? We love you. Amen.